All right, this is a uh, video footage uh, for the heat engine lab. Uh, we have the computer screen here, which will be uh, monitoring the uh, output of some sensors here. Um, the sensors that we'll be working with today, we have um, right here a low pressure sensor. And uh, this is connected to a chamber here. This is an aluminum cylinder. This will be our chamber. And uh, we'll be changing the temperature of this thing by putting it into a cold bath of ice and a bath of hot water here. These are the two reservoirs here, the cold and hot. And um, this chamber here is connected uh, by means of this tube to a cylinder right here, a piston essentially, uh, which is allowed to move upwards or downwards due to uh, temperature variations. And uh, on top of this, we have uh, 200... Uh, and five grams on one side and five grams on the other. So overall, we have 200 grams on the top of the, uh, the platform here for the syringe. Um, so that as the piston moves upwards or downwards, there'll be this much mass on there. Now this is connected up here uh, to a rotary motion sensor. So as the piston moves upwards, this thing will rotate, register the motion, and basically send this over uh, to the, uh, the interface over here. Now the interface itself is a Science Workshop 750 interface. Uh, we'll be setting this up with a program called Capstone on the computer. And uh, Capstone will uh, be reading this information in real time and uh, we'll be able to see and uh, monitor the graph of uh, pressure versus volume using this, uh, this setup here. Now the other bit of information that we're gonna um, also use is the thermometer. This is this is green uh, stick here. Let me go ahead and pull this up. This is a thermocouple. And essentially, when you dip this into the hot or cold here, it'll sense the temperature of the, uh, the water itself. So we'll go ahead and run that as well uh, to get temperature information. So without further ado, uh, oh, and uh, meanwhile, we have a close-up of the piston itself. Uh, the picture-in-picture -picture will uh, show that once this is all put together. And so, uh, so this is our setup for today. All right, so we have it on the computer screen now. And what I'm gonna do is just start from scratch here and set up the Pasco interface uh, with the Capstone software that's on here. So I'll click on Cap Pasco Cap Cap Capstone, sorry. We'll start that up. And uh, over here, we have hardware setup. And so we'll click on the hardware setup. So a little uh, picture of what we have down here. And so over here in the inputs, uh, this is the uh, load, low pressure sensor that's going to this. So we gotta go over here and select that. That is correct, right? No, yeah, no, this is the rotary um, rotary motion sensor, this yeah, one here. Yeah, one and two. Yeah, rotary motion sensor here. And then uh, into one, this is our... A, A. Into A, sorry, yeah. into A here. It's low pressure. This sensor. is the low pressure sensor, so we select low pressure sensor that one. And then for B, this is our thermometer. And do you remember what kind of thermometer this was? Mm. Okay, temperature sensor. This is temperature sensor. Just temperature sensor. Yeah. Okay, we'll just use that. I think that's it. All right, so we've connected these various things here to the interface and now we're sort of making sure the interface is reading it properly. Uh, and then we close this. And let's see, we want uh, a graph and numbers. So graph and digits, there we go. Over here, we wanna select um, the low pressure sensor Pressure. And over here we want um, the motion of the rotary motion sensor uh, that will be given as position. All right. Now the reason why we choose position here is because uh, the piston is moving up and down. All right. The, the piston that we have here. Um, in fact, let me do this. And oh, hang on a second. Get this going here too simultaneously. Let's try this again. The reason why you hear me snapping is so that I can queue up the uh, footage here with the, um, the thing that's on the phone. So 
position here multiplied by the area, the cross-sectional area of the, uh, the piston there will give us the volume. So this position information is the same thing as volume, all right? Just multiplied by the constant uh, cross-sectional area of the cylinder. Uh, and then over here, uh, we'll select the temperature in Celsius. Okay, just to test it out, let's see if this will work. Uh, we'll go ahead and start the recording here and see if this will register temperature. And it's measuring pressure also. All right, it's going downwards. That's fine for the moment. This isn't actual data yet. All right, we're just trying to make sure everything is working. And then uh, if we take it out and put it into the other one, the pressure should and temperature should increase. So it's being put into the hot bath now. All right, so it's working properly. Now what we have to do now is, yeah, yeah the, um, the thing is the piston bottomed out when it got put into the cold. And so we'll probably have to reposition the piston before we get started here. Uh, so anyways, uh, this is the preliminary setup that we have for the moment. Now how this becomes an engine, uh, we have to do this systematically using four stages here. So at this point, we're going to uh, start the experiment, run it, uh, following the four steps, all right? And so we'll be uh, stopping here shortly, and then we'll be getting this thing going. All right, so now what we have here is the graph is uh, hopefully properly calibrated to show the full extent of the parallelogram uh, that is produced in the, um, the PV diagram, the pressure versus volume. Uh, we'll see the effects of this as we uh, go through the four cycles here, four stages in the cycle itself. Um, so let me go ahead and start the recording process here. So I hit record, and it's registering the temperature here at this point. This is the, uh, the can is in the cold bath at this point. And just to show you this over here, we have the can in the cold bath right now. And uh, it says place the 200 gram mass on the platform. So Van's going to stick the masses onto the platform here, if you see there. And if you notice in the graph, it's already jumped, all right, uh, from its original position to this new position here. Um, and we're moving to stage two now. The can is moved from the cold bath to the hot bath at T sub H. So it's now in the hot bath. And if we move it back over here, we see that the, uh, the data has moved now at this point over to the far right in this uh, parallelogram. Uh, we wait for this thing to equilibrate to the final temperature. It's getting pretty close to it at this point. Looks like it's reached it. And then we go to stage three here in the cycle. Uh, with the can remaining in the hot bath, the 200 gram mass is removed from the platform. So Van's gonna remove that now. We'll see this plunge downwards like this to uh, the other pressure. So the mass was removed for over here from the, uh, where is it? Right there from the platform, all right. And um, that was stage three there. And then stage four, the cylinder is moved from the hot bath to the cold bath. As you can see here, it's back in the cold bath now at this point. And there you go, we traced out Tennessee. <laughs> no, but this is a uh, parallelogram right here. Uh, the area that is enclosed within this thing is basically gives you the amount of work done by the system, all right? And that should be calculated by finding the area of this thing. If you incorporate that this position here is actually measuring volume, if you know the cross-sectional area of the, uh, the cylinder itself. And uh, if you are given information about the mass that we used over there, which was 200 grams, okay? You have to convert that to kilograms. And then the height difference that you saw over there, uh, you can use that as displacement. And with the mass and the acceleration due to gravity, you should be able to figure out work that way also. And so these two uh, things here, the area inside here and the work done by the cylinder should be, uh, should correlate with each other, all right? In fact, there should be some, you know, uh, a small percent difference between the two of those uh, values there. That's the thing. All right, so um, we're gonna do this one more time. And we're gonna run this uh, with this on the screen here at all times now. 
So let me bring this in a little bit closer and I'll stop this and we'll, we'll start from scratch here, at least for the, for the data. We're replenishing the hot water here to make sure that it is as hot as we can get it for the moment. The cylinder is in the cold bath, so we're back at stage one in the cycle. All right, so cycle, stage one, a can in the cold bath at T sub C, you give it on the screen there. We place the 200 gram mass onto the platform. And we'll see. Oh, oh wait, wait, you gotta record. <laughs> I forgot. I gotta record. Boom. Okay, so now we do it. So there's your T sub C. Now we put the 200 grams on there. Sorry about that, folks. Put that on there. We see it move upwards very quickly there. And then uh, we move uh, to stage two. The can is moved from the cold bath to the hot bath. So this is the, uh, the power stroke, so to speak. All right. And the pressure inside the system. Uh, stays the same, but we see the displacement in the, uh, the system, the volume increase, all right? Um, so this is isobaric, uh, isobaric meaning the same pressure, right? This is stage two. Volume in the gas expands, piston moves up, and lifts the mass work done by the gas. So this is all stage two here. Third part, it says, with the can remaining in the hot bath, the 200 gram mass is removed from the platform. So we're removing the mass now. It should go down that way, okay? That was stage three. Uh, this stage three, the volume of gas expands because we just took the mass off of the platform. And so this is an isothermal process at this point because we're maintaining the same temperature uh, for all this. Um, and then at stage four now, the cylinder is moved from the hot bath back to the cold bath. So there's no mass on the platform. We're moving it back over and we see that the piston goes back down again. So this is an isobaric process at T sub C. And so at, at, at this uh, constant temperature here, we see the system go back down again to its lowest point. All right, now we'll keep doing this one more time just to make sure we get the proper area for this. And so um, going back to stage one, 200 gram mass back on the platform. There we go. And then uh, taking it out of the cold bath into the hot bath, this is part two. Pistons going up. Let's see if it goes to the same spot or if it goes lower. Maybe a little lower this time. All right, that's fine. Uh, it's reaching, yeah, it, it's not quite up to where it was supposed to be, but it's okay. Uh, and then now we remove the mass, the 200 gram mass. So the system drops in pressure there. And then we plunge it back into the cold bath again. All right, so we're going, we underwent two cycles here in this case. So we have two parallelograms on top of each other, all right? They're about the same area each. One is slightly to the left. Here, let me just, this one here, all right? And then this one here, going all the way this way. So using the numbers that we have on the screen here, you should be able to calculate the volume of the system uh, of the inside of the parallelogram to calculate the work done, all right? Maintaining that this side over here, you have to convert over to Pascals. In this position in meters, you have to multiply that by the cross-sectional area of the cylinder itself to get volume, all right? So you'd be able to do that straight away. Um, and so there's two different trials that we did here. Uh, just for good measure, let's do one more trial, all right? So uh, we put the 200 gram mass on there. This is stage one in the cycle, okay? And then we Take it and put it into the hot bath again. Should top off pretty quickly there. Wait for the temperature to equilibrate this time. Close enough. Okay, so we take the mass off. It should drop in pressure. And that was an isothermal process there. And then uh, we take it and plunge it back into the cold bath at this point. So 
the position of the piston goes back down again. And there we go. All right. Now, there's also some indication here of what's going on with the position. All right. It keeps shifting, as you can see here, uh, to the left with every single time, every single iteration. Uh, this may indicate that the system may be leaking some air. Uh, it may not be perfectly sealed. Uh, so, but we do the best we can with what we got here. It seems like uh, even with these three trials, we're getting a consistent amount of volume, uh, I'm sorry, uh, area inside this uh, parallelogram for each of the three trials here. So go ahead and do your best you can with these uh, values and uh, determine what the volume is. I'm sorry, the, the area of the parallelogram is for the three trials. Take the average of the three, and then compare that to the amount of work done uh, by the piston itself, all right? Force multiplied by displacement. And so um, the footage of the picture in picture should give you that information also of how high the cylinder goes upwards with each of, with cycle two, the power stroke, okay? So uh, this concludes the data, uh, video data portion of this lab. Thank you. Out of that. Yeah. So just a, a quick note here. Van was saying that uh, as we're transferring the cylinder from the cold to the hot, the water droplets on the outside of the, the cylinder are being transferred as well. And so the overall temperature of the hot bath changes with each iteration. This is the reason why the position is changing so dramatically with each of the tries. All right, it's not that the system is leaking, but rather it is uh, an issue with the temperature uh, changing uh, with each time we try it uh, due to the fact that there's uh, stray droplets of water being moved from the cold to the hot bath and vice versa. So that's the reason why that's happening. So you might want to put that into your, uh, your conclusion there as part of the sources of error. All right, thank you.